the one you looking for the messiah is here good morning shalom today's message is to all the rabbis especially those rabbis who had predicted that messiah will come on 14th of adar 5779 also to all the rabbi from the sanhedrin if they are listening my video i want you to listen this video very very carefully because this could be my last video before you all come pick me up or put me on my throne or before all the things start that i've been telling you so especially for the rabbi i have already down some rabbi's name because remember i had no idea till last year 5779 till god woke me up and told me to go to jerusalem and i was there and then i started to understand that you all were waiting for me you all were had predicted that messiah will come 5779 now in my case i knew it since last 20 years that i am the chosen one so but i didn't know that this is what exactly is coming up in my life that the temple has to be built in jerusalem i thought that god want me to build the house in houston texas because that's the place the god came in my life so i was thinking that one day maybe i will build the temple and i had purchased the land and getting ready for the temple on the same time god had revealed me that you have a bigger job than that and i was just wondering what is that bigger job and i thought that i am the one from the revelation chapter to prophet which is both die and rose again in the end time but the message that i want to give you today to all this rabbi rabbi berland rabbi kaneski rabbi kadori which is not uh any more uh rabbi fish rabbi wolf and a more past rabbis that that i want them to know that whatever you had predicted last year you all were absolutely right you were absolutely right and i was there just like just like the moses when he came back and he told everybody that god have sent me to release you from the bondage of the pharaoh now his own fellows didn't listen and believed him in fact they told him you the one killed one of the pharaoh guy you all want us to call the pharaoh and let him know that you the one kill one of your one of his god and moses left he went to the god again and he told god that remember that they're not going to listen to me they're not going to listen to me and god told him that yes yes you right my children which is all the jew jewish community that he said my children would not listen because they are stiff neck they are very stubborn but you go back again to pharaoh and take your brother aaron with you and that's how everything started so just like last year i was there I had no idea where to go and whom to talk. I didn't know there is a Saint Henry who controls everything and there is a 70 rabbi. I had no idea. I just came over there with my small bag and I had made a flyer a big flyer it says that I am the anointed one I am the messiah i am the redeemer i am the come to build the temple 
And I told everybody I was with standing right there at the Jaffa Gate, Lions Gate, Mercy Gate. I was there. I was there for 40 days holding. I was there on donkey as God told me. I was on donkey all over at the David City. I was at the uh, uh, Jewish Quarter. I was at the Jaffa Gate, Lion Gate, Mercy Gate. I was whole day long on the donkey. Also, I was at Nathanayu office. I couldn't able to get in because he wasn't there. He was in Tel Aviv. And I left the message. They took my passport. They took my pictures. They took the pictures with a holding. It says that I am the anointed one. And uh, they told me that they will give the message to Nathanayu. And I left. I left from there. And I was there, like I said, 40 days. And one day God told me, go to to the Western Wall and tell those rabbis that I am the one you are looking for. And what they did, they took me out. Now, there are a lot of people saw me on donkey on the sky at night. When I was over there at the Jaffa Gate at that grocery store, there are six people came and told me, you the one we saw last night hovering in the donkey about the about the Mount Temple. Now, I don't know all those things, I, but I know that there is something going on. So my message again, the main message <coughs> is to, excuse me, all those rabbi and Saint Henry, you all are not going to find a Messiah. If you are expecting that, okay, he didn't come last year, this year definitely that Messiah will come on Adar or Passover. Now the Passover this year is April the 7th which is my birthday, April the 7th, 1962. If you understand this birthday, then you will understand what and who I am, which is very important. Because if you understand the Daniel, Daniel 762 prophecy, which is connected to my birthday. Seven times seven plus 62, seven will be passed. Seven times 70, 490 years been given. Seven times 7 plus 62, 483 years will be passed and the anointed one will come till the Jerusalem will be rebuilt. So the thing is, if you understand the Daniel, then you will know who I am. But today I want to explain to you one more time, very briefly. Very briefly, I want you to study all the scriptures that I'm going to give you. If you understand those scriptures, then you will know who I am. And then also, if you don't come and pick me up or call me, well, I'm not coming over there unless you all come over here first. The second thing, you will bring the Trump and Nathanayu over here at my place to pick me up. That's the only way I will go because I was there last year. Now only way, two way I can come. One is you all pick me or the second is on his time, which is you all know exactly because you all have predicted. If you pick me up on your time, the things will change faster. But if you don't, then we're going to see the Gog and Magog and was then that probably come on the way. Most of the people is about to suffer. And so what I am trying to tell you that today's my message, please listen scriptures by scriptures, read when Nathan, the prophet Nathan, gave message to King David. He said that since 
you have a lot of blood on your hand, you will not be building the temple, but your one of the sun, one of the sun will build the temple. He will be my son and I will be his father. If he does anything wrong, I will punish him. But my mercy will never, my favor will never go away from him the way I took away from the soul. So remember, he said one of his son, sons from his own blood and flesh. So if you read that one, 2 Samuel 7 and 1 Chronicles 17, you will know that God promised he told Nathan to David that one of his son will be on the throne forever and ever. So who will be on the throne? On the throne will be David, one of the son. That's clear that point. So I want you to read those two scriptures what, uh, sentence by sentence, word by word, and analyze what I'm saying. Then look first Chronicle chapter three, verse two, where Caleb, which is Daniel, is the second son of King David, who was taken by King of Babylon, and he was in exile, where he was controlling everything that King Nabu had given him. So you see that God has already been training him for a kingship. Now I want you to read Daniel chapter 7, 9 and 13. Now 9 is this what it says, the throne been put and I saw the ancient one set down to judge. Now there are two persons involved over here. One is the ancient one, and one is the son of man. Let's put, a lot of rabbis say ancient one is God. And I am telling you, the ancient one is not the God. Ancient one is somebody was born before and promised to come back. It's called the ancient of the days or ancient time. Now, if you think the ancient one is a God, let's put, in your prospect, ancient one is a God. So God is up there. Am I correct? So there are two persons in all, son of man and the ancient one. In the first scripture says, the ancient one sit down on the throne. Now, God is a spirit. So this ancient one has to be some man that God has chosen. And remember, when he will judge, King David's son, he has to be on the earth. He's going to be a king and he's going to be rule and reign for rest of his life forever and ever and ever. So tell me if the son of man, he came from above to down to the ancient one or son of man went down to up to go see the ancient one. Now, if son of man go from down to up, then the throne is up there, not down over here. That means King David's son will be sitting up there, not down on the earth. It's very clear. If you read chapter 7, 9 and 7, 13, this is what it says. The throne were put and the ancient one sit down to judge millions of angels minister to him and tens and thousands, millions stood by him and the books open. He is the one, remember God said to Nathan, to promise to King David that one of your son will judge and he will honor and he, all the nation, all the nation will come and obey him. That is what it exactly says. I'm going to read now 7.13. So 7.9, he says, a throne will sit down. So it says, ancient one will sit down on the throne. Ancient one supposed to be down, not up there. So on the 7.13, this is what it says. 
As my vision continued that night, I saw someone look like man coming with the cloud of heaven approach to the ancient one. Now, ancient one has to be down. And the son of man was up there. So if you understand, the son of man came down to the ancient one and he led him into his presence. And look, what does it say? Let's read that one word by word. This is what it says. Is my vision continued that night? I saw someone look like man. Coming with the cloud of heaven, he approached the ancient one and, and was led him into his presence. He was given. Who was given? Who was given? Who's he? He, the ancient one. If the ancient one was God, then he already had the power. He already had the power. He don't need any power. So this is what he says. He was given authority, honor, and royal power over all the nations of the world. So you see the ancient one has to be down over here to receive the honor and the power, the royal power, and the, all the nations to obey him. So it is very, very straight. It's written, he was given authority, honor, and royal power over all the nations of the world. So the people of every nations and language would obey him. His rule is eternal, will never end. His kingdom will never be destroy. So tell me, who's this ancient one? Ancient one is on the earth. Is ancient one is a God or son of man who already were up there, came down and his soul, you can say, or his spirit rest upon me in this end time. And through him, everything will happen. So he's the one going to build the temple and he's the one God has sent him to bring you back to build the temple, bring all Israeli back to Jerusalem. Let all the nations and the language to worship the Lord of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Torah will be teach all over the world. Now, I want you to understand those scriptures and tell me where am I going wrong. Now, the third, the, the final scriptures that I'm going to tell you, which is Daniel 12, 13. Now, Daniel was God's loved one, as you know that when you read chapter 1 to 12, that God had given him all the gift and God, he was one of the God's loved ones. And this is what God was showing him all the visions about the end time. And every time God was showing him, his question was, you are showing me everything, but when all this thing will happen? And the God always tell him, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret until the time of the end. Look, if somebody tells me, hey, keep the prophecy secret until the time of the end, that means I feel like, okay, he's going to let me know end up on the end of the time of the end. On the time of the end, he will tell me what it is exactly. So second time again, he asked him and God told him, many will be purified and made spotless, which is 1210. Many will be purified and spotless, but wicked will be continue on their wickedness. But you, Daniel, Keep this prophecy secret until the time of the end. So God told him again the same thing that Daniel, go away right now till the end. You will know everything. So then finally, again, he asked one more time to the God. And this is what God told him. This scripture is very important if you understand. This is what it says. As for you, Daniel, Go away. You will rest 
just like others. At the end of the days before the end, you will rise again to receive your inheritance. So God promised him that in the end time, I will bring you back. You are the second son of David. So I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to let you see the end time and I'm going to give your inheritance, which I have promised your for, for your father, King David, that one day your own son will be sit on the throne forever and ever and ever and ever. Very straightforward with the scriptures by scriptures. I have told you these things I never heard from any rabbi that they can explain to you Daniel chapter and King David's son. Now it's all up to you. This is all up to you. It's on your hand right now. Either you come and pick me up right now. And I told you that I'm not coming. I'm not coming even Adar, this Adar or Passover unless you come and pick me up and unless you tell Trump and Netanyahu to come and pick me up because Trump is looking for Messiah. He sent two Jewish employees of his to go and ask uh, Rabbi Kaneski when the Messiah is coming last year. Also, Netanyahu knows that Kadori and the another rabbis have prophesied that he needs to hand the key to the Messiah before he get out. There is no election. It won't happen again this year. And Messiah has to come in. You know, it is not easy for me. Like I said on my previous video that I born and raised in the Hindu family. My families are still Hindu, my brother, my sisters. They all are vegetarian, first of all, and also they worship all the idols. They have so many idols in their home that, that even if I tell them, they don't believe me. Of course, I throw away my idols years ago when God told me to throw it away. Second commandment, do not make any idols. So, you know, it is very tough for me and I understand all the rabbis. It is very hard for you too because I am not one of you right now. I am not a Jew. That's what you think. But I am from the tribe of the Judah. As Genesis 49 10 says that that Messiah will come from the tribe of the Judah. So remember, I am one of the lost tribe and it's going to be hard for you. No doubt. It's going to be hard for you, but you have nothing to lose because by my faith, I come forward. If you have a faith and if you believe in Torah, if you believe the God, if you believe that Messiah is here and that's what you are telling to everybody, then get your faith out. Put your faith in the front and say, we need to go this person, whoever it is, we need to talk to him, who he is, because that's the only way things going to expedite everything and whole world will change. So that's what I wanted to tell you last thing that it's not easy for me. So faster you do is better for me, better for my family, my friends, and everybody will understand that I am not a crazy. I am not a cuckoo over here. I am the one, your Messiah. Thank you again. And we'll see you if God will, in Jerusalem, very soon.